Get yours today, because Sunday is here <laughs> at socialsecurity.gov. Me? Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's edition of AM Minnesota. Boy, it's been a while since we've been in studio. We were at the fair all last week, which is always a lot of fun. I always enjoy doing our AM Minnesota show out at the Rice County Fair. It's always a terrific time. But we're back in the saddle, so to speak. Tomorrow, some folks will be coming in talking about Faribault's crazy days. Yep, crazy days. It's coming up this weekend here in Faribault as businesses go plum crazy with all kinds of deals. So we will invite everybody in the KDH listing area to stop by. Jerry will be on the road Friday. He'll be heading over to Alcorn over in Dodge Center. They're celebrating 20 years. It's been that long. Yep. I feel old now because I remember when they were organizing. I remember going to some meetings about their organization and talking to some folks way 20, back 20 years ago. So that should be a very informative program. I know he's heading over to Claremont, I should say, not Dead Center, Claremont to visit with those folks. I'm going to talk about the Waseca Garden Club on Monday. And I'm hoping to get the new executive director of the Paradise Center for the Arts here on AM Minnesota soon, too. So see if we can get that done. Little Mermaid is coming up. The Little Mermaid, yes, everybody knows. I think most people know about that. Walt Disney's The Little Mermaid, the Disney film, The Little Mermaid. And we have some cast members and the director of the play. The Paradise Community Theater is putting this on this weekend and next weekend. Eric Parrish is with us, Medford native, right Eric? Yeah, good morning. Very proud of your Medford roots. I am, mostly because my dad taught music there for 36 years, so, <laughs> you know. It's kind of my thing. Yeah. <laughs> and now you're in Worthington, right? Yep. I teach music now in Worthington. Which was where I was born. Right. I remember this about you. It's the turkey capital of the world. It is. It speaks volumes. They race turkeys down the street. It's crazy. <laughs> There's <laughs> lots of turkeys Yep. in that area. Mm -hmm. And of course, we are the turkey capital of the world as a state, Minnesota, you know. Right. So, double turkey. Yeah. <laughs> double turkey. <laughs> So we're, here to, we're here to talk about fish. We are here to talk about fish. Yep, Little Mermaid opens on Friday. Life is the bubbles under the sea, as we have affectionately keep reminding ourselves. <laughs> so how is it going on your Little Mermaid with Larry? It's going really well, I think. Um, <clears throat> so we built these, uh, this, this huge, so the Paradise Center doesn't have a fly system, which means we were bringing scenery in from the ceiling, right? Correct. Flies in. And so in order to create the illusion of being under the water and above the water at the same time, um, my dad and I engineered this um, three-tiered uh, pulley system so we can bring in the waves and pull out the waves into the, into the theater so that we can be above the water on the ship and below the water for under the sea uh, at the same time without having to move massive amounts of scenery. <laughs> you should have received an award just for that. Well, I, you know, it, it. my dad is the one who really is the ingenious. I draw the picture and I go, I want it to do this. And then he comes up with how that all works. It's. I'm very lucky to have him be able to do that. Right. I didn't tell you, gentlemen, but you need to be kind of close to the microphone. About thumb to pinky, I always say, is the general distance of the microphone. I'm specifically speaking with Jackson Heeman. Jackson, how are you today? Great, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. I still need you just closer to, okay. maybe you can lower that for him. There you go. How old are you, Jackson? I'm 12. 12. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember being 12. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was 12 at one time, but I just don't remember it. No, I'm just kidding. What grade would that put you in? I'm going into 7th grade. Oh, 7th grade. And you're from Medford, too, I understand. Yep. And being surrounded by Medford people today. Mm -hmm. What's Medford's most famous? What's it most famous for? Um. Or the smallest town to have a McDonald's. Yeah. That's <laughs> there. Yeah. Uh, butcher hogs at the cash market so far today are steady in the Midwest. <laughs> August uh -huh. is down 87 cents, 73.72, and October 77 lower at 62.85. It is warm in here. It's a really warm. <laughs> U.S. stock indices are in positive territory. <laughs> 
Crude oil is now down modestly after some early gains. John Perkins, Brownfield. Thanks, John. Certainly appreciate that. Your opening market report is a service of your KDHL Agri Boosters, including Northland Buildings. For quality post-frame construction, head to their website, northlandbuildings.com. And Ag Power Enterprises, your John Deere dealer, Deere dealer. They have locations in Otana, Hollandale, Belle Plaine, and Osage in Northwood, Iowa. Get on AM Minnesota today. We're talking about the Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid. They're performing that at the Paradise Center for the Arts, the Paradise Community Theater is performing it. And we have in studio Eric Parrish, who is the director extraordinaire of The Little Mermaid. Nate Mark. Chesney, who I think, well, we'll let Nate tell us who he plays. And then uh, one of the little fishes, I think, Jackson Heeman is with us. Is that what you do, Jackson, in the play? What, what are you in the play? I'm flounder in the play. You're flounder. 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 The little yellow fish that is Ariel's friend, <laughs> the mermaid's friend. Yep. Not the love interest, just a friend. No, Air, uh, Nate's Prince Eric, the, the love interest. Yes. This is my favorite Disney show because the prince's name is Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> it's not conceited or anything at all. <laughs> Do you know? Were you named after the... No, I was not. But, oh, well. <laughs> Eric runs the family. Grandfather, um, great grandfather. No, it was a. I think it was an arbitrary name. They it was just better than Pre my mom vetoed Preston Parish, so that was. So they opened a name book, closed their eyes, pointed to a name, and you were named. I right? don't really know the story. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not Preston. They, they, <laughs> not well, that anything's wrong, but yeah. the alliteration is bad. My folks were going to name me George. <laughs> I'm glad that didn't happen too. I could just hear them. George, you party, you put, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right? I have a friend named George. I'm going to tell that. Tell <laughs> <laughs> well, George Washington, pretty distinguished person. There you go. Right. Yeah. So, George Washington, we started rehearsals for Mermaid during 1776 while we were doing that. So, we had about three weeks of overlap where we were doing, Nate and I were involved with that. So, we were doing that and then doing Mermaid in the basement in 1776 on the stage, double rehearsing for since about the beginning of June. Yep. Yep. Now you get the idea of what they go through at the Guthrie and right. places like that. Because, mm -hmm. you know, the same cast members will be in plays that show one right after the other. You have to get the one ready while the other one's still going. Yep. I used to do that in graduate school, and I remember that that was a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> and it still is. It still is. Yep. So let me ask you this, Eric. Okay. Do you think it's more work to be acting in a play or to direct a play? I think the stress is different. Um, it, it, when you're directing, you have more. There's more management, and there's you have to think of everything for everyone. Um, when you're acting, there's more pressure because you have to be responsible for yourself. And so I don't know that one is more or less. I. I have found that I'm more comfortable directing. It's I, I feel like my instincts are better interpreting all of the characters in the story as opposed to just focusing on my own. That's been my experience so far. So Nate, tell me about your character in The Little Mermaid. Well, I play Prince Eric. Um, and for those people who you know know the movie pretty well, they know that Prince Eric isn't necessarily... Uh, uh, he doesn't have a terrific part in the movie. No. He's kind of just a, 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 a pretty plain guy. That's right. But for the musical, they've they've done a lot to try to develop that character into something more than just uh, a handsome prince. You know, they they've given him songs to sing and and a little bit more of a of a personality. Yeah, the song they wrote for the show. They so they added songs to Prince Eric and to um, Ursula, the the octopus, right? And the song they wrote for Prince Eric is is really fantastic. It's called Her Voice and. Um, I, th I think it was, I mean, you, you come obviously to listen to Part of Your World and Under the Sea, but I, I, I think the song that they wrote for The Prince is my favorite song um, it's, it's in the show. It really is a terrific song. Yeah, it's very well, very well written. This was not ever in anything else. It was not in the movie, it's just in the stage version right. of the show. So I tell people it's like the Disney movie, but like the expanded cut, right? Because there's, there's about, I don't know, four extra songs that are in the film. Yeah. Yeah, maybe five. Yeah, at least four, yeah. Yeah. So it does follow the film. Well, if oh, you've yeah. seen the film... Yeah, 
the way out of the story is a little different because right. you can't really, you know, yeah. kill the way Ursula is demise happens yeah. is a little different just because of it's not a cartoon. Yeah, right. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> we have to do it live on stage, which is the cool part. But you know, you, you have to make some changes to make that happen live. So I'm very curious to see what you have for costumes. So um, my friend Roxanne um, um, built most of the costumes um, for the show and so they are um, they're really nice I think. They're really nice costumes. They're really cool, really interesting, colorful. They're yeah. very colorful and I think they're very functional. You know, we're still learning how to walk so we look like we're swimming. So in the Broadway production, they were all on rollerblades and those rolly shoes to make them look like they were swimming. We're not doing that because everyone will go off the front of the stage of the period. <laughs> yeah, no need lawsuits. <laughs> and then um, there was a revival last year or the year before in which they flew, you know, like they had them on wires and they were flying around, which we're also not doing that. but. Um, I think what we do makes it give, I think we're doing an effective job of making it look like we're in the water and swimming. Yeah. Moving your hips, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, and keeping your, you know, keeping your legs together so it doesn't look like you're walking in your fishtail. <laughs> <laughs> Has that been a bit of a challenge for you, Jackson? Well, my costume is different than a lot of the other ones because, um, like, it's round, not like a tail that goes like on the legs. I mean, I have like tights and then shorts and then like this fish part on my body. So it's different, but yeah, I like it. His his is more stuffed and a little more literal than some of the others. So how cool is it to have fins? It's pretty cool. I like it. He's got a big fin on his head that goes out like a mohawk. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, probably my favorite cost or my favorite part of the costume is my um, like fish part because I don't know I just like it a lot and I dig like he's got really cool makeup on too that like matches his costume and that's really cool yeah you're obviously not allergic to it uh, no <laughs> one of the first big productions I was in in high school I was allergic to the makeup really my face was on fire <laughs> on stage wow I played Pappy Yoko <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. My face was on fire. I'm not kidding. Wow. I was allergic to them. Sir. I'll never forget that. I'll be rocking in the nursing home, but I'll remember my face on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and Mammy Yoakum. Well, it, it, what it did, this is the neat thing about theater, as you know, all you guys know. It created a great bond between Mammy Yoakum and Pappy Yoakum. Right. I and mean, to this day, we, we still keep in touch. Yeah, you know, uh, this group, there's a lot of people in this show that I have never worked with before. And I, you know, there I've developed, you know, Nate and I, this is the first time that, that we have worked together. And, I, you know, we've kind of become friends instantly almost. Yeah, we found out we were pretty similar. Yeah, very similar personality-wise. And this is the second show I've done with Jackson. And, you know, mm -hmm. he's like... My little protege guy, like, okay, now what can we do with Jackson? <laughs> That's a cool name, by the way. I know, right? Jackson. Thank yeah. you. Don't you think? Uh, yeah. Good it's like one of the coolest names that you can think of. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about your character, if you would, please. Well, I'm more, like, afraid of, like, um, the, like, world above because, like, I'm a fish, you know, and they, like, try and kill me and stuff, <laughs> so... I'm more afraid of that, and Ariel's always at the surface, and I'm, like, her best friend in the show, so um, I'm always trying to follow her, but, like, as I'm on the top of the water, I'm, like, scared and stuff, and, yeah, I'm, like, a guppy. <laughs> yeah. It, so, refresh my memory, are you in love with the mermaid? Yes. You would like the mermaid to be your lady? Yes. And so he gets jealous at the prince well, of course because, right... Yeah. So then you want to be human? No, uh, no, I don't. I don't know. Like my character doesn't really want to like be up above because like I don't know. He likes it below, like all the people down there and stuff or fish. So I think one of the re reasons that he really likes the mermaid is that he helps Ariel 
get the prince, right? And so, you know, it's kind of a, a lesson in sacrifice and, you know, you want the, you know, you want this person to be happy. Wow, there's a moral to this story. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the stage version does a better job of making it not for lack of better, you know, uh, it's not about, you know, Ariel changing herself for the prince, you know, it's mm -hmm. about these characters learning how um, they have to grow and they, uh, you know, like Triton has to, to be able to let go and let Ariel be who she wants to be. And, you know, I, I think they do a better job of tying those, those themes um, in than, than in, the f in the film. You know, the, the film is fairly, you know, oh, Ariel wants to be a girl and live on the land so that she can be happy. And, and the stage version is more about, you know, um, that that transition and uh, growth as yeah. a young person and Finding coming who you of really age. Are. Yeah, yeah, coming of age. That was the phrase mm -hmm. I was like. Well, I don't know. I gotta be honest with you. It'd be pretty cool to be a fish, <laughs> <laughs> depending on what kind of fish you're. Yeah. You're oh, what flounder. kind of fish? I'm a flounder. Just a flounder. Blue, yellow, stripes. A flounder fish. Flounder fish. A flounder so fish. How do you get in the head of a fish? How do you know, for your character, how did you decide um, to play your character? Well, I just really think, like, the character, like, if I was him, like, in, like, real life, then, like, what would he do in that situation, you know? Like, that's how I think about it. But, yeah, that's how I, yeah. I would think that would be the hardest part of the play. Well, I think they do a good job of uh, making the characters relate kind of teenage, you know, that, that angst. And so, you know, he's... Founder's written a little bit kind of like a punk, you know, and he's um, kind of uh, defiant in terms of, you know, he, him, he and Ariel are breaking rules a lot. You know, Sebastian the crab is always chasing them and, oh, don't do this, and you can't do that, and your dad told you this, and, you know, and mm -hmm. those two are off running around. We were just talking about this morning in the lobby, there's a funny part during Under the Sea where Ariel just takes basically kidnaps Flounder and, and runs away with, with him and the expression on his face when he when that happens is so funny. <laughs> he does a really good job. Both of these gentlemen are very talented singers, so I, I, you know, that someone said last night that it's worth the price of admission just to hear both of them sing. So. Wow, Jackson. I'm impressed. Thank you. Fantastic. What other productions have you been in? You, now you, you mentioned that you were in another production with Eric. Uh, yeah, that was nine. Um, that was my very first one with Eric. Um, that was like the first solo that I ever had in a musical, actually. Were you like, scared? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, you're always nervous, but like, you try not to show it. So, yeah, Yeah, I was, hard. last year when we had auditions for that, we were looking for this little boy to play little Guido, and he walked into auditions and I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> I'm someone that can sing and is adorable. So then when we were getting ready to do this, I called his mom and I was like, okay, so this is the plan. <laughs> we need him next summer and don't let his voice change. Your mom's cool with all this? Yeah, I mean, she she um, doesn't enjoy being my chauffeur, I should say, Probably but not. I make her because I can't drive, so. <laughs> You're a few years away from that, though. Yeah, about six no, 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 no. About four. four. Yeah, <laughs> four. Yeah, math is hard in the morning. Yeah, you're going yeah. there for a second. Unless they change the driving laws to 18. So. <laughs> I know. Which could happen. <laughs> I hope not. So you like the set, Nate? You think it's pretty cool? Yeah, I think the set is terrific. And I think mm -hmm. that the uh, lighting design is also fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we had worked with the set for a while, and then the lights came in, and it just dramatically changed everything. You know, it, it just you get that feel of every scene changes just a little different with how the lights set up it, it, it really it's it's just fantastic to, to see it yeah. so people who have seen um the nine that i did or footloose or 10 november um in in that space i bring in my friend aaron the lighting designer who um, works up at artistry in the twin cities and also assists at the children's theater in the guthrie and she comes down and makes the magic happen i mean i she's 50% of my dad and her make me look good. <laughs> you know, they, they execute what is going on in my head. Yeah, because lighting is big. Right, especially in this, we have moving lights and things to create the illusion of waves and, and, you know, and there's a lot of 
different colors. Um, you know, so we're using purples and greens and blues and things to create different like layers of water. So there are there are seven layers of scenery that to, to make the to the, the depth of the ocean. Um, and then she she lights those different layers with different colors. So then they look further away to create that illusion of depth. That, it, it's really awesome. Who plays Ariel? Yeah. Pardon? Who plays Ariel? Jada, and I was trying to remember J La France. Jada La France. Yeah, and she's from Waterville. Okay. And this is her first show. It's her first, her first, wow. her first how, musical. Now, how perfect is that? A mermaid from Waterville. Right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But she's fantastic. She's fantastic. Mm -hmm. She sings the crap out of uh, Part of Your World. I it, mean, beautiful voice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. That's another one. You're. You, you come to hear that song. You come to hear that song. You will not it, be disappointed. Yeah. Like it, it is, it is fantastic. Yeah, I'm getting goosebumps just sitting here. Right <laughs> now. No kidding. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she's really. You know, there was a there was a several ladies that came to the to the um, audition. audition to you know, I have I think every redhead in southern Minnesota came <laughs> to the audition to be Ariel, <laughs> and you know it was hard. I I had it narrowed down to about three. And then I just put them all on stage, and I gave them Part of Your World, and I said, okay, ladies, one of you needs to sell this song and steal this part. And she just went up there, and she had the whole thing memorized at the audition, and just sang, sang it. And I was like, yep, yeah, hands down, no question, that's who it is. And she has been a pleasure to work with since day one. So I would think that would be the hardest part of directing, is choosing who you slot into what role. Yeah, I always tell people the two things that make a production work are who comes to the audition and where you put the furniture. <laughs> 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 so, so far, this is your favorite role? You like being a little flounder? Yeah, I do. It's a lot of fun to play. It's something different because usually I'm just like this normal like guy character. But this is fun. I, I enjoy it a lot. You have a good imagination. Yeah. Which you have to have when you play characters like this. Yeah, you do. And he has great comedic timing, great timing, which I can't teach him. That's just an yeah. instinct. He yeah. lands his jokes well. He land, yeah, they're really good. And he has a really fun song called "She's in Love." It's kind of like a Jackson Five kind of girl group number that's added to the show from not in the movie. And he does a really good job with that. He sings it with the Mer Sisters, so he has like six mermaid backup singers. <laughs> it's pretty fun. So where does talent come from? Mom, dad. Oh, uh, well, I think it came from my dad's head of the family, because a lot of them, they know how to sing, but not from my dad at all. <laughs> you can't sing? No. Not even in the shower? No. <laughs> he, he, he tries, but no. She I hope he's not listening. <laughs> <laughs> brothers, sisters? You have brothers? Sisters? I have one sister, Haley, and she's... Um, she was just in the show in Medford, right? Yeah, she was. Yep. She's just getting started into performing. So she's a little sister? Uh, yep. She's um, nine right now. Yeah. Did you guys ever do a duet? No. That was a quick answer. <laughs> <laughs> and Nate um, uh, was a music major in college, Yeah, right? music ed major. Yeah, and then you worked up at Paul Bunyan for a while? Yep, or? I did. Up in Bemidji. Mm -hmm. And pretty talented guy. I was, he was, these two were kind of on my radar when I started, but, um, you know, when I was started casting. Yeah, so you I'm, immediately thought of them for those particular Yeah, mm -hmm. well, Jack, <laughs> Nate thought of himself and told me, he had like four people, <laughs> Let's er, Nate wants clear. to play uh, Prince Eric, I, mean, I was in, I'm in Worthington and people are calling me to tell me that Nate wants I to I did not partner. tell them to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be very clear about that. <laughs> but you're not disappointed now, right? No, no, no. I did want the part. And I that's why I told him that, you know, straight up that I wanted the part. Because I, I, I saw this at Chanhassen, and I saw what they did with this character, and, and I liked it, and I wanted to do it. I hadn't done a musical in, in two years, so kind of, I missed it. Yeah. So That kind of gets in your blood, doesn't it? It does. And uh, let's see, Abigail Green who is Dallas Musselman's daughter, it plays Ursula. Okay. And she's really fun. And she's doing well, too. Yeah, and she's got that, you know, voluptuous thing going down, and that, that works. And Palmer Huff plays King Triton. And, let's see, um... Caleb, Caleb Wagner. Caleb Wagner 
who's from Medford, is Sebastian the Crab. That under the sea number is quite the, the to do. There's blinking lights, there's costumes, there's LED packs on the eels, and the jellyfish all light up on stage. Oh, and cool. We're in the audience, flying fish over the audience, and it's, it's, it's a huge production number for like seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. So how can people get tickets, guys? Uh, they can visit the uh, Paradise website, paradisecentertheartsorg or they can call um, the box office at the Paradise Center from noon to 5, 507-332-7372. Uh, we open on Friday. Tickets are $15 for members and 16 for non-members and 11 for kids. And we're doing four matinees, so Saturday afternoons and Sunday afternoons, this weekend and next weekend. And before the matinees, you can have tea with Ariel uh, an hour before the performance. You can make reservations also at the Paradise Box Office. Oh, cool. Little kids will love that. Yeah. yeah. Don't you think? Although this is a play that I think adults will enjoy, too. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know... Disney does a good job of engaging the adults on one level and the kids on, on another level, and I, I think that's even more so the case in, in the stage version of, of this show. I keep telling everybody, we're, we're aiming for the, the fourth graders and the dads. Okay, those are our two target audiences. The fourth graders <laughs> and the dads. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see how successful you are getting both of those. Right. I think yeah. we'll do pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, the, as the Paradise was transitioning into the new executive director, you know, I, you know, they had asked me to do a musical, and I said, we need, let's do something that everyone's going to enjoy, and we can introduce this, um, you know, the, the transition and, and keep some sort of stability as we go forward. Because I really think the Paradise Center is an important part of this community, and I think, you know, as a, Nate and I are both music teachers at one point, or he used to be, and I, I still am, I, I really, the arts are very important, and, and terms of developing and keeping communities alive and it's something you can do for your whole life you know and that's what community theater is about and I and I'm really passionate about helping that venue and that organization stay alive and, and work and so that's the you know, reason I come up here every summer I mean it's two and a half hours and I'm moving into my old high school bedroom <laughs> you know at my dad's house camping out and, and doing shows in Faribault but I, I think it's important in that place. All right. So get your tickets, folks. Take it in. The Little Mermaid. Again, performances July 29th and August 4th and 5th at 7.30 in the evening and July 30th, 31st, August 6th and 7th at 2 in the afternoon. That concludes today's edition of Bay Minnesota. Certainly want to thank our guests. Tomorrow we'll be talking about Crazy Days, which is going on at Faribault this weekend. We'll get all the details on AM Minnesota tomorrow. You're in tune to KDHL AM in Faribault, Minnesota.